between the episodes on Eisenholm. With the new year upon us and the snow freshly melted, it was time to get into some serious landscaping. And for that, we needed a whole bunch of shovels. To the bloomeries! I cooked up a whole boatload of iron blooms and got to hammering out shovel after shovel after shovel after shovel. Gazing out from my front door upon the lumpy landscape before me, I knew where I needed to start with a hearty turnip breakfast. Then it was out the door to start smoothing out the lands between the farmhouse and where our castle gatehouse is going to go. That's right, we're finally starting to break ground on the castle, or place ground in this case. I threw together a rough map just to get an idea of where to focus on for different types of buildings. Though, as with most of my plans, it'll be more of a guideline to improvise off of. I know for a fact those roads I've placed in red will not resemble the actual roads and paths we end up building once we can see the reworked terrain in front of us. While we've got this aerial shot speeding through several hours of landscaping, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of you for the outpouring of support for the series so far. It has been such a rewarding experience, and I always love getting to chat with each and every one of you in the comment section and on the Discord server. The absolute explosion of interest in the 100 Days video alone has been staggering, and it's very quickly become the most popular video on the channel. So that tradition will assuredly continue, with each completed year being compiled into a long-form video. So once again, thank you all so very much. But before I start getting too sappy, let's briefly talk castle design. I'll be incorporating elements from various castles, both real and fictional, such as Warwick Castle, Kaer Morhen, as well as Blue Nerd's Castle from that other block game. Real talk, I have built that castle from start to finish. Twice. In survival. Adding my own customizations and secret passageways both times, so... I have no illusions as to how monumental of an undertaking a castle of the size and scale I'm aiming for is going to be in Vintage Story. Thankfully, we already have a plentiful supply of conglomerate rock over by World Spawn, so with the help of the quarry mod, the stone we need won't be in short supply. We are going to need two very important buildings in order to help make this castle a reality, however. One, a proper workshop with a Helfhammer setup to speed up tool and lantern production, and two, a sculpting studio to make and store templates for the many, many chiseled block designs that will be used over the course of the build. And that would have brought us to today, if it hadn't been for one little technical hiccup. My recording software had updated, and I didn't notice that all of the footage from after the update looked a little like this. Apparently, the update reset the recording settings to the lowest they could go. So, I recorded another episode worth of content, so we wouldn't have to all suffer through that. So the highlights of what went on during the potato hours are as follows. I marked out where a little fishing hut will go to act as our southern dock before getting the footprint of the castle's eastern gatehouse put in place. I quite like the look of it. I mean, it doesn't really look like much of anything now, but my imagination is running wild. Heading back home, some of the veggies were ready to harvest. Also, I lost Mr. Cluck. Also, I found Mr. Cluck. He did get out of the house, he's been at the coop. And a ram, that I gently coerced into the stables where a lamb had already spawned in. Hopefully it'll grow up to be a ewe. At the start of June, I took a trip down south to the pig pen to see if my math was wrong about when Cutlet's siblings would be born. It wasn't. The math was solid, so I raided a ruin on the way back home. We'll come back to check on the pigs after June 6th. Back at home, I marked out a partially sunken giant gear shape to act as the front entrance to our future workshop. I'm not entirely pleased with it at its current scale, so I think some chiseling will be in order to really capture that reclaimed pre-apocalypse vault feel that I'm going for. I might actually make it a bit smaller. It's a fairly sizable entrance, which is great and very grand scale, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe a bit too bit too chonky of a door. And that brings us to today. For real this time. So I had fully intended to build out the um, outlined foundations of a... 
my ankles outline foundations of a lot of other builds as well apart from just the uh, little shipping dock right there or the fishing dock rather and the gatehouse but I think I want to at least get a floor in or a ground layer under this so we're gonna do that now it's not gonna be anything crazy it's uh, just gonna be dirt honestly um, and I realized from my testing, I do need to widen out the gatehouse uh, gate portion here by uh, two more blocks. So each of these sides is going to have to get pushed out a little bit. So let's just get that all filled in. Now, the reason that I'm putting these below where we've already marked out is because where the uh, packed dirt is, that's our ground level. So let me just get up there just so we can see. So where our path comes in, these packed dirt blocks are the ground floor. So I'm putting in this dirt just below it. So that way when we dig this out and we put in our floor, we'll have something below us. So if we need to replace a bit of floor or anything like that, we aren't risking opening ourselves up to falling down below. And uh, getting rammed by the big horn ram there. Look at him, eating grass. He doesn't even know we're up here watching him. Oh, maybe he does. Oh yeah, we got him down below. All right. That's pretty neat. Dangerous, but neat. Okay. Yes. Yes, dogs. I hear you. Well, perhaps we will deal with the dogs. For they shall be a problem. And we've got a heavy temporal storm approaching. All right. All right, you know what? We'll quickly deal with the dogs. And then we'll have ourselves a, uh, a heavy temporal storm, so that could be pretty fun. Let's put all this dirt back. I know we just got it, but let's just bump it back. Hello, Chimkins. Put the bean aids in there. The aged torch holder. You know, let's... Uh, this is the one room that hasn't had any actual lighting in it, so... Let's stick ourselves a torch. There we go. Now we've got a little bit of lighting in the room that we keep sleeping in, even though we do have a bed upstairs. Let's get as many of these open as I can at once. Just to see where... Different things can go. These lore books I can read. And then pop on our uh, bookshelf. Pop that tool belt away. That's the old clockmaker tool belt. We've got a heavy tool belt on now that looks, you know, 90% the same, but I like it. Ah, just close all of them. There we go. Dimitri's notes, two out of five. And Dimitri's notes, three out of five. All right. Well, let's pop these books in here and we'll just do maybe something like that yeah just kind of trying to keep some of the colors you know the similar colors at least a decent bit of a distance away from us just to keep it varied and we'll grab ourselves our drifter carving knife just to have that on us won't need that until the storm rolls in but for the moment Let's go deal with some pesky doggos that are causing an issue over at the construction site. If we can't defend our gatehouse, how can we expect our gatehouse to defend us in kind? Oh, don't, don't you go running off into the ocean, you coward. 
There we go. And this will be a good little source of fat for us right now. I think we've got some in the uh, in the storage somewhere, but I don't know how much. Aha, come. Come to me, boy. We're going to fight. I wish to duel. Come into the light. There we go. Where's the scared little puppo? Oh, I'm so sorry, boy. You're gonna grow up and, and try and eat my giblets. I couldn't... Oh, we get things from them. Oh, that's sad. Well, you know, waste not, want not, and all that. Well, trying to take our mind off of the uh, horrible atrocities that we've just committed. Look at the map here. Look at that. So that's already starting to kind of take shape for our gatehouse. And the rest of the castle is going to kind of take up this section here. It's going to be a fairly sizable structure. Uh, but I'm liking the way that the gatehouse is looking, even just from the sky right now. It's coming together. We're going to have to get this path continued on down to meet up with the rest of the road there. Uh, probably sooner rather than later. I keep having to just make a jump because I don't step off here for some reason. I'm a fool. That and I'd like to widen this out so I actually have a reliable walkway. But let's get a little of this outlined, at least as much as we can. And this is what I mean when we're removing the ground here, so we can actually get ourselves situated on uh, something solid. So that way, if we're changing out the foundations or the floors or anything like that, we are not gonna fall. There we go. So with it pushed out one more block, that is going to be the footprint for one of the towers that flanks our gatehouse. Ow. Somebody start running a counter of how many times I'm going to fall. It's going to be a lot. That's probably another wolf over there. We're going to let that one be for the time being. We're encroaching on their territory, building the castle here, but that's okay. That's going to be their problem. Now let's pop some of this back into our inventory there get ourselves all prepped get our hunger sorted I think it's about high time we start heading to the boiler room the evening is just majestic look at this oh yeah Kind of blinding, staring into the sun. Who knew? Wait a minute, do my eyes deceive me? <gasps> We're starting to get some berries. Oh, 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 we'll ripen in less than a day. Good. Good fruit's gonna be back on the menu, because I think we're... We're hurting for fruit. Yeah. I've got my knife. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Alright, who do we have here so far? Oh, they're all still getting hurt. Do we already have some double headers? <laughs> we do indeed. Oh, ho, ho, happy days. This will hopefully be a nice, productive, and profitable storm. Ooh, that's two temporal gears. Come on in, buddy. The water's fine. 
<laughs> now, of course, I'm sure there's probably plenty that are just a little outside of the range that they can detect that I'm in here. So I could always do a little run around. See, any of them that are close enough to see me, they'll come running in. But for any of the other ones that are outside, I'm sure I could just go lure them. Like that guy over there. He's a little far away. You're gonna be lucky enough to get a second double header? Probably not. But a man can dream. Well, looks like two temporal gears might be all we're gonna get. No Jonas parts from the double header, but that's okay. Five rusty gears, two temporal, and a little bit of flax. That's uh, it's not the worst haul we could have gotten. Especially since it's enough that we can now repair a translocator. Once the world stops being uh, whatever this is. Huh. All right. Well, things have calmed down a good bit here. I didn't leave anything in these chests, did I? No? Okay. Oh. Lightning. That actually reminds me. Oh, you're not dead. Can I trick you into... But that... Looming storm reminds me I should probably make a lightning rod just so that the chickens don't get killed and the other animals over in the stables don't get killed. Lightning's dangerous. Do we even have enough copper for it? When was the last time I grabbed Oh, we have enough copper, okay. Now lightning rod. The importance of these is to redirect lightning, and they kind of protect in like a cone shape. So the higher we can put it, the more protected area we can get. Looks like we're making a giant fork. There we go. And number two. Fear my trident. Poseidon quivers before him. We'll get one on top of the chicken coop when we've actually got some chickens in there. For the time being, no, 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 no. Back inside, back inside. No, 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 no. Uh, I've got some grain, I've got some grain here. Come back. Don't you dare, don't you dare. No, 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 no. Cutlet, cutlet. Cutlet. Oh, oh, oh boy. Uh, cutlet. That's a bad cutlet. You go back home. I see a flaw in the design. What are you doing? How? Are you spider pig? Cutlet, what are you? Go home. Go home, Cutlet. Okay, he's slowly making his way back. Okay. I just wanted to go in there to put a lightning rod on to keep you safe. I didn't want you going on a journey. Were you just taking a walk? You just taking a walk to the window and that's it? Okay, go back inside. Don't, don't eat through the walls. None of that. There we go. Okay. So I guess my thought to have a uh, fence running around the outside here is not a bad idea. For now, let's just pillar up onto the roof. 
And we will get our lightning rod. Right there. I wonder... If I can just... Put a single block way up at build height. Hmm. That might be something to look into. For the moment, though, roof of the house might just do. Hmm, right. None of these are solid blocks either. Well, one right there for now, and let's pop one maybe onto a pillar nearby here. Or we worry about that and we build a pole when we move the chickens in. And that'll likely be once those eggs inside the house hatch, then we'll try and move them all over into here. That'll be tricky, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll give her a try here. So let's use up the rest of this cobblestone and fill in a little bit more of the base of the gatehouse. And before we get too far, let's grab some path blocks. And let's just pop our knife right back in the kitchen. Don't worry that we just use it for carving drifters. They're, um, sanitary. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. And I left my lantern in the dirt dugout. Okay, so... I think we were doing this in multiples of five, just to keep the angling consistent. What do we have to come over to? Oh, uh, a good way. So we'll just keep this pattern up until we hit the ground, and then we'll just mosey on over that way. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. But we can't dwell on the past. Let's build the future. I guess I need to fill in the middle too, huh? Probably a good idea. So not only is this going to provide a little bit more stable of a surface for everything when we're digging blocks out, but just while building it in general, I'm not going to fall in nearly as much. Fall off, I guess. I'm going to keep running out of dirt, though. A few more blocks and we'll have this long enough to connect to itself. And then we've got to connect it going uh, right through here, but these are probably going to be more bits of farmland might make dedicated plots for specific uh, crop types once we've got enough seeds, and that way we can just keep doing rotations. Hello, Chimkins. I here for dirt. I am definitely going to need to go get more meat at some point soon. So good thing it's spring. We can go on a bit of a hunting trip soon enough. So that bush meat from the wolves is, uh, well, it's not much good for us. We are nice and safe with a functional, meh, subfloor. It might just be flying dirt for now, but soon these towers will extend down to the ground. We're going to turn this probably, I don't see us building up the land, so this is probably going to become a little bit of a bridge coming up to the gate, which means there's going to be stone going all the way down. We're going to start the elevation off right. Ah, landscaping inside the castle. Which does also mean that there's going to be a lot of empty and open space inside the castle itself. And I'm okay with that. Because spots like that are just going to be good uh, pre-dug basements, basically. So we are going to have large swaths of dark areas underneath. That's mainly just 
going to have uh, our fake terrain built up over top of it with a big old gap so we don't have to fill it all in with dirt because that's going to save us literally hundreds of thousands by the end of this. Now, if this were the other block game, I'd be worried about building up terrain and having a nice big old dark area right underneath of us. The only thing that that's going to provide is a spot for drifters to spawn in times of high temporal activity. That's it. They can spawn down there all they like. We're not down there. And apart from that risk, well, there's not much else going on there. And eventually, when we need more storage, when we want to start building out basements and things underground, that's all going to be open space anyway. So it just saves us a whole bunch of time. We'll just have to go down there on a calm day and light the whole thing up. The main reason I was worried about not having a bunch of gaps over uh, yonder over there was just because it might affect the rates for the boiler room. That's all. And so why do I have this piece of cobblestone removed? Well, you see we've got our gate right here, our tower. I'm going to have the insides of these walls be hollow. So that way we have little passages so if this place were populated by a whole bunch of guards, they can have little arrow slits in here for anyone who gets trapped in between our two gates. So we'll have a portcullis here and a portcullis at the other end as well. So that way, there's going to be a whole bunch of defensive battlements on the towers here uh, and right above the gate, actually. So if an enemy were to break through, get inside, now suddenly arrow slits in the walls so people can shoot them you know, at ground level. Arrow slits probably in a higher level inside the walls as well. Or, upon the walkways, having the same uh, like crenellations, machiculations, um, just defensive battlements. And this is just basically a... Uh, this is a zone of you don't want to be in here if you're not allowed to be in here. But then if you get through this gate, you will be in the first of three tiered areas. So the curtain wall is going to extend probably from these towers here um, that'll make the bailey of the first curtain wall. That'll be the largest. And then we'll have a slightly smaller one uh, going up the mountain a little bit and an even smaller one with the keep itself. And each of these will have different buildings. We might actually even have more farmland in here if we don't have enough out there. Uh... Yeah, farmland in here might actually not be that necessary. So probably more decorative and, yeah, just different kinds of buildings. That looks like a hole over there. I've probably been down there. So I'm just going to finish clearing out the dirt around this one portion of wall that we've finished filling in. And I'll worry about texturing it when we've actually got enough materials to get more than... Uh less than half of one single layer of this done. Yeah. Save my dry stone for the time being. I'm liking how this is turning out. So, with it being the morning of June 4th, we have two more days. Just two until the pigs are ready to be taken from down south. So, let's say we go on a little bit of an adventure. Because you see, we've got ourselves two temporal gears right here. So you know what time it is. You know what we're going to do. Oh. Oh, I need a new pickaxe. That's not good. So we've got ourselves a couple of options. We can either go to this translocator here. That's going to be... I believe that's going to be somewhere between the market district and the residential area. Or this one, over by the docks. Hmm. Let's, let's leave the docks as a mystery. Let's go to this one first. This is far closer to the area that we've been terraforming, so when we start to do a little bit more work on it, um, we can theme it based on where it goes, because this will probably be the area we touch on well before the far coastline. I already fixed it up with metal parts. Okay, good. Let's just pop this into our offhand. 
and pop in. <gasps> oh, it's alive. Let's see where this thing's going to take us. Ah. Okay. We're in a cave very, very far north. We've gone to the northwest. Uh oh. Oh boy. Uh. I didn't think about this. The, this is a very dangerous place. We've got a lot of limestone still, so no new rock type. What else is around down here? Just a lot of drifty boys. I should have come prepared. I came the exact opposite of prepared. I came here exceedingly unprepared. We have quartz. I'm just going to run around at the speed of sound here. Speed run to see what there is to see. Uh, a lot of limestone. We got black coal. We got some chert. And we got to get out of here. Oh. Huh. Oh. Oh boy. All right. Well, I could have that could have gone better. I'll have to pop in there and check out what's in the chests after I block up the wall. So, give me a second. Let, let's Whew. Let's go in for round 2. There we go. Blocked in as much as I can be. Let's take a look at what we got here. We got a couple of gears, some rope. I'll take that. Quartz, why not? All right. Okay. Uh, do we have anything good up here? More gears. Torches are... All right. A uh, bunch of empty crates. So this one's not quite empty. What do we have? What do we have here? Just 13 granite stones, that's it, okay. Uh, what sort of terrain do we have? That looks probably limestone and then either clay stone or chert. So it's kind of a lot more of the same of what we've already got. We definitely don't have what we need to reach the surface. So, let's take the uh, pile of junk metal though. And that should be good. Let's uh, let's pop on back home. Okay. So this is gonna be limestone area, which is great because we've already got limestone right here. So that makes it even easier to get that all decorated up. Local materials to advertise far away versions of the same local materials. Okay. Right. Our flax is good. Let's start harvesting some of that. But since we've had so much happen this episode, even if most of it was done during a time lapse because of uh, poor quality footage. We've gotten an absolute ton of work done this episode. So, I'm going to collect up all this flax behind me that's ready, and I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I hope you had fun. Did you have a good time? Let's have a moment of silence for all the shovels that were lost in today's terrain excavating extravaganza. That was a lot of shovels that are just no longer with us anymore. So, thank you so much everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And a special shout out to all of our channel members, thank you all, you're the best. I will see you in the next one. Bye! Oh, so much flax. That's a lot of flax seeds. I think I can actually just make a whole field of flax. Huh. Ah, that worked out pretty well. <laughs>